this is Lola Lee T. Hi, everybody. Let's talk about Candy and the Gang. We're talking about episode one, season one. And I guess Candy has a new spinoff show. Congratulations, Candy. So welcome to the recap and review. So the show centers around the Old Lady Gang restaurant. I'm not going to lie. I've heard some pretty negative reviews about this restaurant. I've heard about the charging customers for ice, the overpriced menu items, the bad attitudes of employees, especially the hostess, the feeling of health inspections. So this spinoff show is going to be very interesting. And I got to admit, I wanted to know why the reviews were so bad. Well, I guess we're going to find out. Well, watching the show for the very first time and watching this, obviously, this first episode, I can see why the reviews were so bad. The first episode was really good. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. I got to say that there are a lot of new personalities, a lot of new people to get to know, a lot, a lot of people. And this will mark Candy's fifth spinoff. One thing is clear about Candy. She likes to hustle. She's always finding new ways to make money. She even wrote the theme song for the show. And I think it's her singing it too. I'm not mad at her. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at her hustle. She knows how to get that coin. She is about collecting those checks. Point blank period. So I got to say, move over, Vanderpump Rules. Candy and the gang are in town. I wasn't very interested in the Vanderpump Rules show, but I'm certainly interested in Candy's new show. And from the jump, I loved how Candy addressed the negative reviews and the bad press about the restaurant. I love that because that was the elephant in the room. We all want to know why the restaurant is getting all these bad reviews. So Candy and her husband, Todd, want to improve the OLG restaurant. They want to get things back on track. Things at the restaurant are off the rails. It's like the wild, wild west over there. And And it's this way because I think they have neglected the restaurant. They have a lot of other business ventures. So they didn't really give this restaurant a lot of their attention. They bring in new manager, Philip, and he is fine. He's from Blaze. Philip has been having a really positive effect on the Blaze restaurant. So they thought they would bring him over to the OLG so that he could have the same positive effect over here. But the staff have no idea that Philip is the new manager and he didn't bother to tell them. The staff have no idea who he is, why he's there. They think maybe he's just a worker like them. They have no idea that he is their new boss. So the point of hiring this new manager is to get the restaurant back to where it was when it first opened. When it first opened, it was really popping. They didn't have all of these issues. So Candy, her husband Todd, and Don Juan are meeting with the new general manager, Philip. Don Juan has been doing way too much at the restaurant and they want to integrate Philip more. But, oh my God, I'm thinking Don Juan is responsible for so many business ventures. I mean, how does he even find the time to be at this restaurant? How many jobs does Don Juan have? So in the scene where they're having their meeting, the way Candy and Don Juan looked at the wall when Philip said they have some people in Candy's family that don't respect authority, 
That was hilarious. I really like Philip. He don't tolerate nonsense. And I can't believe this man took a pay cut to work with these people. Philip is used to working with the top tier and fine dining restaurants. And I don't see him staying at OLG for very long, especially if Candy doesn't get on board. Then we meet Chandrika. She is one of the standouts in this first episode. Chandrika, well, she's the original host of OLG. She is responsible for the bad reviews online. And I understand why the reviews were not great just by her introduction. So why is she still employed by Candy? Why is she employed? Todd, why is she employed? Candy, why is she still employed? If she's not good for the OLG, she's got to go. Chandrika needs to be fired years ago. If she's not good for your business, she needs to go. She needs to go. Bye, Chandrika. Bye. We meet Dominique, the dancer. She is the sage burning bartender. Dancing is her passion. Dancing is first and OLG is second. We meet Brandon, who is the manager, but he doesn't seem like he wants to manage. We learn he just kind of got thrown into the position when the old general manager left. He was not even given any training. Philip tells Candy that the aunties are part of the problem. We're talking about Aunt Bertha, Aunt Nora, and Mama Joyce. So Candy gathers the staff to meet the new manager, Philip. Watching everyone in the scene, watching the staff at the beginning of this episode makes it very clear why the business is struggling. <laughs> the crew were so excited to see Candy and Todd. I mean, look at them. And from the jump, Chandrika is talking about how she doesn't like Philip in front of everybody. How can she not like Philip if she hasn't even given him a chance? Chandrika says that he is the hundredth manager they've had in four years. So good luck with that. I say fire Chandrika on the spot. Fire her now. So Candy wants to do a reunion for all the past and present employees. Why would Candy want to do a reunion for past employees, I'm thinking? Obviously, they're not there for a reason. Leave these people in the past. Focus on the current employees and improving your restaurant. Don Juan wants to have a meeting with Philip and Chandrika. I guess because of the comments Chandrika made during the little introduction meeting, Don Juan wanted to meet with them. Don Juan makes it very clear to Chandrika that whatever Brandon says goes because he is the new manager now. So Philip says that he doesn't want to do any back and forth with an hourly employee. <laughs> oh my God. Philip tells Chandrika that she could go home because he didn't want to deal with her mouth. He didn't want to deal with her attitude. And he even said that she was just a greeter. <laughs> Chandrika thinks she's a boss, but Philip says she's a greeter. That's hilarious to me. So Philip heard Chandrika gossiping about him to Dominique. Chandrika didn't even seem to care that he was so close by. This girl does not care. So Philip is like, I can hear you. You can go. You can go home. Go home now. So with all the arguing and because they had the meeting and everything, Candy has to go outside and apologize to the customers because of the long wait. And there was a lot of customers out there waiting to get in there. So Candy met with the old lady gang separately to get their take on the restaurant. 
all basically tell Candy the same thing. Your employees suck. Your employees are the problem. They ain't worth nothing. And I have to say, I agree with them. That's my first impression of the staff. They are pretty bad. How is this restaurant still open? I think it's still open because of Candy's clout. Everybody loves Candy. They're coming to that restaurant for Candy. So Candy wants her mama and her aunties to stay out of the kitchen. She realizes that it's their recipes, but she just wants them to stop arguing with the people in the kitchen. So Mama Joy says she doesn't want to argue with anybody. Okay, so it's the day of the reunion. We start to meet some new and old employees. So we get to meet Torin, and he used to manage the Friday Night Lives, but he quit because he felt he was being pushed in many directions. I think he was being given a whole bunch of other different jobs, and he really only wanted to do one job. And like he said, he really only wanted to do the events. We find out right away that the tension between Philip and Chandrika is still there. It's still fresh, fresh, fresh. Nothing has been resolved between these two. So Chandrika says, I'm just going to do my job. I'm just going to do what he says and just go home every day. But isn't that what everybody has to do in their daily lives with their jobs? Just do what the boss tells them. Just do it. Just do our jobs and then go home. Do your job, Chandrika. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're getting paid for. Just do your job and go home. So there's a little flirtation going on between Brandon and Dominique at the workplace, but they're acting like they're not flirting at all. Todd doesn't want to hire anybody old. He doesn't want to bring them back. He has that certain mind and mentality, and I agree with him 100%. If you fire someone, why would you want to bring them back, leave them in the past, but not Candy? Candy is all about the loyalty. I think that's why she hasn't fired Chandrika is because of the loyalty. She was the original hostess and maybe Candy is stuck on that. I mean, how long has Don Juan been with Candy? Probably years, right? The loyalty there is pretty evident. So we meet Brian. He is an ex-bartender. He was everybody's favorite bartender. Brian describes working at the OLG as being one big dysfunctional family. So Brian and Richard, well, they look identical. Brian tells us he's wearing a toupee. I guess that's how we're going to be able to tell them apart. I guess a man weave. And the toupee actually looks really good on him. Brian is giving out flyers for his soul food egg rolls at the reunion. I love egg rolls. I mean, God, that sounds good. Soul food egg rolls. Oh my God, I'm hungry right now. But he's handing out his flyers at the OLG reunion. I don't know. Is that appropriate? I don't think so. But I'm going to focus on the egg rolls because I'm hungry and they sound yummy. Candy wants ex-bartender Brian to come on back and work at the restaurant. Then we meet Richard Shardo, who is the fashion forward host at the Blaze restaurant. Candy wants him to come over to the OLG and be a host as well as with Sh Chandrika. And I'm thinking to myself, Candy, fire Chandrika. So Candy is doing this because she's hoping that Chandrika will learn from Shardo. But I can see Shardo and Chandrika clashing. They seem like very different people. She does not like to be told what to do, and it looks like he's going to come over and he's going to be retraining her, but Chandrika thinks that she's going to be showing him the ropes. I think that these two are not going to get along because Shardo and Chandrika's work ethic is the complete opposite, so there is going to be a lot of drama between these two. The next day, Shardo is letting us know he's getting paid way less than what he got paid at the Blaze. He arrives to work early, but of course, Chandrika is late. She is 10 minutes late. I'm not surprised. And that scene of her taking out her curlers while she was driving. Oh boy. And customers are outside lined up, waiting to get into the restaurant. And where is Chandrika? Well, she's still on the road. She said she's always, <laughs> I 
And she admits herself that she's always late. How does this woman still have a job? Coming to work just before it opens is not okay. And this is a restaurant. I mean, I've never worked in the restaurant industry, but I would think that you would have to arrive early so that you could get things set up. I don't know. I would think that if you are the hostess, you should arrive at least 15 minutes early. I could be wrong. Someone please correct me. Don Juan and Philip are annoyed, of course. Shardo wants to know if there is an iPad or something that he can check people in with. And she's like, no, this is the ghetto. <laughs> oh, Lord. Why would she say that about Candy's restaurant? But, but why don't they have an iPad to check people in with? I mean, I mean, but he has a point. Where is the iPad? I mean, you would think they would have an iPad to check people in with. I mean, does Blaze have an iPad to check people in with? Here is Chandrika calling Candy's establishment ghetto and she still has a job. Fire her, fire her. Shardo said that one of the reasons why he doesn't like Chandrika is because she has a neck piercing. I mean, what does that matter if she has a thousand piercings? As long as she can do the job, that's all that matters. But she's not really doing the job. But we all know... She's not doing the job, so the piercings have nothing to do with anything. What he's seen sounds like discrimination to me. I actually uh, didn't like that he said that. So Brandon, who is the manager, because the old manager quit, is annoyed with Philip, and he's annoyed because Philip is talking to him real crazy. Shardo's first shift with Chandrika was crazy. He called it interesting. I'm going to say it was just wild. He had to go up and down those stairs probably a million times. So many things were disorganized. Things are a mess. So we revisit Brandon and Dominique. We all can see they really like each other. And Brandon finally asked Dominique out, hopefully for us, This will be a problem because we all know that it is very dangerous to date co-workers. So I envision some future drama. Brandon said that he started working at the OLG because he wanted to get close to Dominique. Aw. Okay, so the power goes out. It's getting hot in the restaurant. And Philip is worried that people are just going to skip out on their bill. So why is there isn't a generator in this restaurant to back up the power going out? We learn that the power is out on the entire block. The customers are waiting for their checks. Customers are hot. They are sitting in the dark. How unprofessional. And what are the staff doing? They're just sitting there because they're not getting any direction. Candy finally pulls up, and of course, Philip is mad. Candy says, we got to get a generator, but Todd doesn't seem to want to get a generator. He doesn't want to spend the money. That's what we're seeing here in this confessional. Then Philip says, why isn't there no generator? This is crazy. Apparently, this happens frequently, and Todd hasn't gone out and gotten a generator. So if this is happening frequently, So are people just running out and not paying their bills? I mean, what if they uh, don't have any cash with them? The fact that Todd knows that this is a problem and he hasn't done anything about it makes the problem even worse. I am sitting here watching Candy and Todd try to justify not having a generator in their restaurant because it's a big task. What the actual hell? And I'm thinking y'all have a whole restaurant, right? But you don't have a generator and the power goes out frequently. Todd needs to stop being so cheap and just go out and get a generator. Todd, this is not a good look. You need to get a generator now. So what does Chandrika say? She says this is another day in Candyland. The people... (laughs) The power goes out all the time. And I think Chandrika is going to have a lot of really cute one-liners that are going to go viral. This whole situation with the generator is a mess. How is it that you have a restaurant, Todd, and you don't 
want to get a generator. Todd is being so cheap. I don't think this is a big deal for Todd because he doesn't have to deal with the situation directly. He is not at the restaurant every day. If the power goes out and people are paying by credit card, how are they supposed to settle their bills? So if this is a problem and they're not willing to deal with the problem, why don't they just only accept cash at this restaurant? Anyway, this is ridiculous. And I can see why this restaurant has so many problems. And I think Todd is one of the problems. Even Candy said they need to get a generator. Why can't they just go out and buy a generator? Why does Todd need to give permission to buy one? Better yet, delegate the responsibility to Don Juan. And this will be his 100 and one job. This situation is so embarrassing. I feel embarrassed for Candy. Did you guys see the lineup? If if Candy's name was not attached to this restaurant, I think this restaurant would have went under by now. But people are still coming even though there's bad reviews, power outages, all for the love of Candy. The Candy needs to fire some of these people. A complaint from multiple customers should result in a termination. I think it's bad for business. These employees are not good for your business. Get rid of them. Who hired these people? Chandrika wanting to do whatever she wants. She comes off kind of like a spoiled brat a bit, but she does seem fed up with the work conditions. I got to agree with her there. So I'm thinking to myself, so Candy kept the greeter with the bad attitude, but she couldn't keep Torin, who was bringing in the coin. And to sum up, I see that they need to let go of unprofessional employees, family or not, get a generator, and look for staff that have experience in the food service industry and hospitality. But I did enjoy watching the show. I really like the show. I think there's going to be a lot of drama. This could be the next Vanderpump Rules, but even better. Okay, guys, that's the review. So subscribe so you can be notified of episodes two, recap and review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and share. And I love you guys. Bye.